Yo. What is up, everybody? Rage Cage 20 here, back with Nightwish's album Human Nature on the human side of the album. Though we will be doing nature. Still not 100% positive how I want to do that. I feel like I can combine sounds together, but we'll just depend. We'll find out as we go. But it's not important for now. We have Shoemaker. And uh, I remember reading a little bit about this before the video. Um, and so I wanted to double check. And now this is an unreviewed bio on Genius, okay? But I remember this being at least somewhat correct. That this song is about Eugene Shoemaker, who is an American geologist. Maybe American, maybe not, I don't know. Who is a geologist regardless. And one of the founders of the field of planetary science. And apparently he died in 97, and in 99 some of his ashes were carried to the moon. Sounds pretty sick. Now, I, I gotta say, I feel like, like, while that is, like, super cool, I feel like Eugene really let down his family by not becoming a cobbler. I mean, if your name, last name, if your surname is Shoemaker, or his family name, surname, I don't know if surname is the first one. Anyways, if your family name is Shoemaker and you're not a cobbler, I, 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 I think you're just letting down your family, man. <laughs> but... That is really cool. That is a really cool feat that he accomplished and whatnot. So, we do have the live in a virtual world version of Shoemaker. I will be watching the other version uh, alone. <laughs> uh, I could do both of them, but I'm experimenting on this one of doing a live video without doing the... Um, without doing the, uh, the studio video. Uh, before or after so that I don't compare the two together because I have a tendency of doing that and that's a self problem but what are you going to do um, so this is not released by Nightwish themselves I don't think Nightwish on YouTube has released this because uh, I think that defeats the the purpose of sales and whatnot but i don't know maybe there's probably a uh, like a dvd or something of some some kind of thing you can buy this on so i don't think that they uh release it for free but i don't fucking know if that's true at all <laughs> and also since it's not by them who knows if this is accurate or correct or anything i played the beginning of this and the beginning of the studio version and they sounded the same so i think we're good anyways let's not waste any more time here let's Bring it on down and listen to some more Nightwish. I've been very, very invested in this album so far. I loved the music and everything from the first song from music. And Noise's video was so in-depth and crazy and awesome. And I love that too. So, Shoemaker it is. Let's get it. Now, it sounds a little quiet. If it doesn't get louder, I'll, I'll fuck with it. Say the three 
little stars When he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with the night and pay no worship to the garish sun. I want to end it quickly. <clears throat> Let me just. I want to go back to the beginning. Yeah, I yeah, know. You're going to play and you're going to need your stuff. Okay, okay, fine. It's, it's one him. Alrighty. It's so weird to. Uh, you know, this is really just. Just shows the. Uh, the times that we live in. Or we're living in, especially. Um, to see. To see a live video. At the end of it, to not hear cheering or clapping or whatnot. That's weird. <laughs> but it was it was it was really smart and a really really cool concept of uh, be people being able to watch you live, but not actually in a, in a very virtual world where you can do anything. You can have any imagery show whatever you have you but that you want to do uh that everyone can watch even though they can't actually go anywhere to see it like to come out and see you personally but it's still kind of in a way get to see you live but virtually that's a great concept it's very very genius very smart idea and whatnot um it's very cool the imagery and everything looked pretty fascinating i, I did enjoy that for sure now I need to look something up here because I'm pretty sure I forgot to check this out. Uh, <clears throat> that's my bad. My, oh, Human Nature is a Michael Jackson song and a band apparently. <laughs> who, who knew? There we go. There's the right one. I think. Yeah. 
it was it was this song that at least I read on Wikipedia. This could be incorrect. I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> so, as it says here, Shoemaker is about Eugene Shoemaker again, uh, whose biography inspired Tomas to write a song. Now, this is what I remember reading here. Uh, according to Floor, it uses last names, but I'm going to use these first names. You know what we're talking about here. Uh, the song lacks a typical structure consisting of operatic voices. Right. Uh, the song was a challenge to Floor to sing, and it took several times to record until the desired result. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Uh, apparently, Tomas's wife. Uh, performed the spoken part before Jensen's floors in the operatic part. Fuck. <laughs> so yeah. Uh I, I, I noticed that. Like I know I know people don't like it when I point certain things out that um that 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 even for a fraction of a second can shift your illusion of floor jansen being the greatest the godliest human being perfect is is not capable of imperfections and could never be the shining light and if you say anything different than that it clearly means you hate her and you're attacking me and what i love and just like i know people hate to hear that because we obsess over human beings (laughs) but I could definitely hear that in the beginning there with, with you know, the very, again, sporadic kind of lacking that uh, the structure and whatnot. That's that's not easy to sing. Like, 100% not easy to sing, especially if you've been singing Western music your entire life. Um, that's not easy to see. And I could hear it in her tonality. <laughs> like, it... it, it 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 was a, a little all over the place um so i mean again if it took her many times to get it right in studio then this probably can be still be a little shaky uh and live performances and whatnot that's gotta be a really hard thing to master because tomas did not write that easy um but the ending there on that operatic section her floor's tone was clean uh, she felt she nailed it. Her vibrato was tight as fuck. You could see it in the shape of her mouth that she was nailing that section. She was living that section like she did amazing at that. So, you know, massage it with something nice there. It is not. I'm not saying it's her fault. And I'm being like, haha, see, floor fucked up or anything like that. It's just like I, I, I was like, I was remember while I was hearing that. I was like, oh yeah, this was the song she had a hard time with, right? Because it, it honestly, it reflected in that tonality. That it, 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 it uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was all it was sporadic but then again i never heard the studio version so maybe that's exactly the way it's supposed to be i don't know but it didn't sound right and there was parts when her and troy were singing together that also i think it was troy that really dipped into uh the wrong note um uh, but besides that uh it was, it was really cool it was really really awesome that i with most videos i don't pay attention to the <laughs> to the lyrics necessarily but i did uh notice a a few parts in here that seem to be talking about uh eugene himself kind of you know now now you're amongst the stars and whatnot which is making me think that the uh <clears throat> that the, uh, the, the the him being in the moon kind of thing is true but i don't know um uh, also the end there i saw at the end was from uh, romeo and Juliet. And i was like oh that's cool that's really cool it was sad for me because this is my f- first, like, I've seen the dude in the thumbnail picture that they have for Spotify of Nightwish. I've seen the bassist, but it's my first time watching a video that doesn't have Marco in it. And that makes me really sad. <laughs> that makes me sad, man. It's, it's, it's real sad, but it's okay. It's fine. It's, it's good. I, can, I can get over it. He's, he's, just a, he's just a legend. It's just whatever. Anyways, excuse me. All right, let's. Uh, I mean, I got, I got a few things written down here. I mean, it's really just going to be uh, inspecting some of that. Sorry that the volume's a little quiet. Uh, I have this thing pretty much cranked up, and I keep fucking with it. And it got like louder than quieter, and it's just it was weird. Uh, but again, this is not like published by uh, Nightwish themselves, so it's probably 
bound to have those issues and whatnot, but it's okay. Um, all right, what uh, I mean, the rhythm and the notes at the beginning there crazy <laughs> like i wish i could see this on sheet paper like or staff paper um <clears throat> because that like dog <laughs> this must be crazily written and i would love to see that um i don't know what i wrote here oh uh I, I, i'm questioning whether or not there was a harpsichord sound at the beginning Beginning. I can't remember if it was or not, so I wrote it down with a question mark just in case. But yeah, let's hear this whole beginning section. Uh, there's a nice little switch up or a one minute in and whatnot, but we want to kind of dissect this beginning here, see if we can discover possibly what's going on here. I doubt I'll be able to figure out if there even is a time signature to this, because uh, the chances is not, and what kind of chaos is written in here. Okay, I don't think it's a harpsichord, though it does have that kind of chimey sound of a harpsichord. I think it's just a specific uh, sound setting on the keyboard. Uh, obviously, even I assumed it would have been still on the keyboard, just a harpsichord setting, but I don't think that's it. I think it's similar to a harpsichord, but it's, it's not the same sound. Uh, but it definitely has that, that, that mystical, starry kind of chimey sound to it and whatnot which I assume is what it's going for here, which I think is really cool. So fucking quiet. Uh, of course, the uh, the choir there, I like that, that that passage there. No! It's like, it's very beautiful, very peaceful, very quiet, but you can still hear it. It's very serene. I like it. And then we have the electronic build to the drop. That's fucking awesome. I love that. Uh, now you've been talking for eternal lies and thunder. A sailor through wings. Story on her calling at the earth. Yours is the whole graveyard of heaven. So there's some kind of structure in here like because the, the the guitars are not just free-forming stuff like they they're set to a specific time signature <laughs> but it sounds like it, it sounds like the the vocal line is is r roughly written because it kind of has a repeating da 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 but then it just goes it, it, it just interjects and goes chaotic here and there. Hold on. Now you've been talking for eternal yeah. Da, 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 da. It just kind of, it just, it, 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 it's like it's a constantly, it, it varies, it could be, it's a constantly switching time signature. So it doesn't have a structure because it's constantly, ah, constantly changing. It, it, feel, it feels like that is what's going on here, but it's really cool. Now you've been talking for eternal lies and thunder A sailor through wings Starry on her calling at the earth Yours is the whole graveyard of heaven A ship that sailed home Your way I like those blast beats. Dig -dig -dig -dig. I like those, those little blast beats in there for the guitar and whatnot, that's really cool. I like how they just hold up. I didn't really, I knew I was close, I didn't know I had 20 minutes. Uh, I like, while, uh, <clears throat> while Flora is going through her running passage, uh, the other instruments just hold out a chord and they start playing a little bit while she's kind of breaking for a few, like a second or two, and then she comes back in. They just go back to chords and whatnot. It's a really good trade off there of the of the lead line. Yeah, right, right there, especially like. 
I mean, I don't need to say. You can hear it. <laughs> uh, but then again, I, I, I still I don't know the studio version, so maybe that's it was designed, maybe it was intended to be that way. I don't know, but that doesn't sound like it. Uh, but yeah, again, that that is very, is is very fluid. It's almost very whimsical, in a sense. Just the da 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 da. This has a nice movement, and then just da 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 da. It just kind of jumps back and forth between this more smooth and then more rapid. Yet it all just kind of has this fluid mo, fluid movement to it, even though it feels very disjuncted. It's fascinating. I like it. It's really it's really cool. And here's around the change up I was talking about. After everything we just had, all that, you know, that open kind of choir and chords and stuff holding over everything with uh, the, the instruments and the vocals trading off the melody line. Uh, I mean, the, it's just the moving line in general. Uh, and then we just, everything kind of just kind of like stops and it gets this like softer section, I think, before we hit the chorus in here. Now, is there anything that I've missed lyrically? Uh, so I, I like this. Now you've been tucked in for eternal earth rise and wonder. So obviously earth rise and whatnot. So you can see the, you know, from the moon you can see the earth and whatnot, and the sunrise and earth rise. And I like that. Uh, but you know you've been tucked in because you, know, you passed away and whatnot. I like that. Uh, a sailor through aeons, story unheard, howling at the earth. Yours the whole graveyard of heavens. I mean, I get, I, then I think that person was on to something with, with the whole being ashes are in the moon now. Ship that sailed home. Uh, I think this way. You're with us, face of the night, singing through the morn for mankind. I want to sing with you, your home now, outward urge. As for every dreaming creature, we want to come with you. Yeah, so I... It seems like all of that this the first section of these verse verse here is or the first verse here, this section whole section is just about that. Is uh, maybe that's what the whole song is about. It kinda seems like it. Uh that's really cool. I think that's really cool. Here I came to be your reach into the fire. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Troy. Troy, my man. <laughs> Check that note. Uh, anyway, sorry. It just, I can't help it. My ears hear that. It's just like, oh, fuck. Uh, I mean, again, maybe intended. Maybe it's intended dissonance, but didn't did not sound like it. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I like this section. Like, literally everything cuts off and it's just smooth female, male vocal blending together. It's kind of, yeah. Yeah, I like this. This is, this is it's a nice little section right before the chorus. Here I came to be your reach into the fire. On a stellar sea, cut in little stars. There you go. That's beautiful. That was a nice little, nice little harmony section there at the end. I like that. I like that. Now it sounds like we're about to bump back into this. We are beauty, which is worth a I think that might be the chorus, actually. Uh, yeah. Interesting. I, I, if not, maybe it's a little bridge, and then it goes back to the next verse or something. I like that, but I, I like that you have this, like... This with how fast these these notes are, these vocal notes are, and with the blast beats of the dig -dig 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 coming in there every now and then for the guitars, when we just kind of go down to that slow, soft section, like there's a little bit of pause before it, you know, or like just kind of peacefulness too, and then afterwards, just kind of just the instruments, the vocal stop for a little bit, and then we get back into the verse. It's a nice little, it's a nice little break, a nice little journey somewhere else. Before coming back, it's really cool. Let me go back even a little further here. 
You can even hear Floor breathing in there. <laughs> That's really cool. It's uh, it's it's a good thing because uh, in that it, it, it's, it's, it's a nice little thing. Uh, to do her live because that's exactly what uh, I mean that's exactly what you do if you've been training music um, uh, whoever the lead is and in this situation the vocals start off the next line whoever the lead is they signify not only that they're about to start but also what the tempo is going to be by how they breathe um, so that's why like all of them are waiting everything's quiet and then just, boom and then you go you know so that, that breath is not only because she needs to breathe to sing again uh, and have a full breath so she can have good tone support, but also that's the cue to everyone else because everything stops. Cue to everyone else. Okay, I've waited long enough. I, I let the pause happen. And we sing. <laughs> you know, so that's really cool. I like that. But also, one thing I kind of noticed is uh, I mean, I'm never, I'm never going to let you, you ain't ever going to hear me lie and say that for it's not. A, a really fantastic live singer looking at the way she shapes her mouth uh, and a lot of these things like every especially during the operatic section is just you can just see her training coming through you can just see just how almost effortless it comes to her in certain sections here yeah, you can see when she goes from that open round, oh, you can see how she kind of goes back to more of that E, kind of that forward edge, the more kind of rock metal kind of edge. It goes from that open operatic, oh, to E. Like, you can just see how she just slides in between both pretty effortlessly. So, you're never going to hear me lie and say that Flora ain't an amazing live singer. I just singer in general, but also live singer. Because uh, this can be two different things. Uh, some people amazing in studio, not so much live, but I mean, Flora's just great both ways. But you could just you could just see how effortlessly she switches between two different singing styles and two different kind of pronunciation sounds there. The fire, the <laughs> Instant switch. Listen for that breath. I love that. Don't you like beauty, which is worth a fountain? We're coming to join you. I love those cards. I love that. Dig it, dig it, Just with the drum beat and everything is so cool. First off, you can just see how hard she's working here. I love that one. No, it's the same. That's right. I thought, I thought this got slowed down, but no, that's right. Okay. Um, I I didn't mention this. And I feel like it should be mentioned because this is again not an easy thing to do, and this is uh, I mean this does show some good uh, musicianship and vocal capabilities here. Uh, for a lot of the notes, dun, 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 it just kind of stays all within the same zone, and then she's doing quick little pop jumps up. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. You know she is, she is definitely staying around the same zone then jumping up to these high notes and whatnot which is not easy to do i did not mention that uh just because it's one of those things it's just like well yeah it's floor she can nail that so it's like it doesn't sound like you should bring it up but now that i think about it, it's like no yeah that's not easy to do uh especially to keep clear tonality and all of that which is why there's some rough spots in here because again that's tomas wrote something that's not fucking easy and floor is doing a great job with it for sure <laughs> I don't know if it's just me, but with uh, <laughs> just this angle for a second, I thought they had a different guitarist for a second because uh, I don't know about y'all, but Impu looks 
it kind of looks like Herman Lee right here. He looks very Asian <laughs> at this. This way. Right this is. I thought they had different guitars for a second. But yeah, no, I like that we're bringing it back down to this this quiet soft section again. Uh, and or chorus. I don't. Fuck <laughs> if I know. Um. Yeah, I feel like there's. I I got distracted because <laughs> I was thinking about. Just uh, I just remembering where Night Wishes come from, where they all they all, uh, and I think it's awesome that to like to not think about age or image or anything like that, because it's all about can you rock and can you make awesome music, but just looking at all these people, it's just like just seeing what I remember you seeing these like all these like like uh, Yuka or Juka I don't know how to pronounce his name the original drummer and whatnot, I just looked like these like fucking like angsty rock stars and stuff and now they're all just gray hair and galore and just they're all they all look like they've aged so much um and that just really i mean it's, it's cool that it's just like yeah I don't, we don't need to look like hot rock stars or something because we play awesome music and i, I respect that it's just it's something just like i don't know the thought of aging and all that stuff just started playing in my head so i feel like i heard something that i wanted to mention but i don't remember what it is also uh, my dog's making noises but it sounds like she's not gonna go on a screaming fit that my roommate's home so i think we're good. it's not my dog technically but our dog i think what i was thinking is that uh and those little sections that they there when she goes da 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 you know it kind of has that moment where she just kind of pushes a lot of energy and whatnot it's just that the the level of volume and command that she can just summon in her voice i think is was uh, caught my attention is very impressive Here I came to be your into the Little stars. Beautiful imagery. Yeah, and this section here, yeah, this is where I started writing some more stuff around here. Um, so I like this section we got to this this heavier, more rock and metal rocking out section love that um though do not get me wrong there's definitely in those blast beats and stuff some metal elements and stuff that was coming through but it was just kind of mostly more symphonic based and whatnot with everything that was going on and around and the vocals and everything but now we got to this like metal breakdown and whatnot which is really cool and it <clears throat> gives me it makes me think it was like you know <clears throat> if i was someone that people knew like this geologist and someone was going to write a song in my honor and whatnot i would love for it to have a rock and awesome metal section i'd be i would look back at uh, like you know if I, if I could see in the afterlife or whatever happens when you die and whatnot and to be and to see the song made after me be like fuck yeah <laughs> like that some rock and metal there that's what's up anyways i just thought it was cool uh plus it says about a vocal change don't know what that means there was a cool retardando in there as well and then the other stuff i have is around like 350 to the end or something like that oh yeah because the uh <clears throat> because the uh the william shakespeare dialogue and the operatic singing and then last 10 seconds were super cool as well so that's what we're looking for for that's the song that's all i got we'll see what happened what some of these meant i also like that no sound that it just played in there it sounded like it would come from a guitar but input wasn't doing that on this guitar so that could have been any it, i assume troy or uh <clears throat> tomas or something I don't know. What's up? Oh, I see. Troy's pulled out <clears throat> some kind of. It looks like a tar, but looks extremely thin and has a very interesting sound to it. Huh. Okay. Let's get a of that. I 
I do like that rhythm. Dun, 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 That's really cool. I like that. Right, here's the vocal change and whatnot. So we switched. <clears throat> we don't have this rapid passage anymore. And every vocal line we've heard that hasn't been that has been that kind of softer uh, singing between Troy and, and Floor. But now we're pick we're cranking it up a little bit here a little bit a little bit of a borderline belt in some more energy some more passion i like this i feel like i heard a harmony in there <clears throat> i was a i did hear a male voice afterwards but it sounded like they fed a little bit of a doubling of floor through the mic or through the speakers or something. It sounded like Flora was harmonizing with herself. Which I mean, when you're live in a virtual world, you, you can put whatever you want through the speakers. So <laughs> you could put the harmony voices in there, and when I would make a lot of sense, because uh, I don't know if this was. It might have been actually live, or it might have just been a live performance that they made and then released out to everybody. But I don't. We would never know because we weren't there. But they might have mentioned in the video like this is being recorded live, but then again, you never know if that's true or not. But you know, I don't know. It's a cool thought, anyways. But I swear I heard two of four, so hold on. That could have been Troy, but I don't know. Yeah, right there. And I was like, definitely hear two voices there. That sounds. I could see Marco being able to do something like that, but I don't think Troy can do something like that. That sounded like Floor. Hmm, interesting. It's a nice blending in here between, uh, between Flora and Troy's voice. I think they do a good job, like, kind of complimenting each other and like smoothing together here it's a very nice blend i like it and of course floor is da da it's a good vibrato and power behind it it's also very clean it's very nice uh i don't know what yes with your i thought i heard with your guiding light but i did not see it anyway uh very cool words here. Like I like some of the, some of these lyrics and whatnot. It all seems very similar to what's already been said and whatnot. But I like some of the uh, some of the lines like on the stellar sea, uh, the dream like Dolkheimer, Dulcimer. I don't. Very interesting. Uh, but yeah, with your guiding light is a nice retardando that happens there. I like that. They slow down a little bit. They slow the tempo. I like that. So, nice retardando down to that open note as the other instruments kind of slow down and stop. And then this section, because it sounds like the end of the song, like how you would end the song. And then some more sounds were happening, so I was thinking like maybe it's just the extra stuff that happened in the virtual world and whatnot. And then, <laughs> Floor came back in and was belting it after... After the the uh, De Romeo and Juliet stuff started rattling off, I was like, "Oh, okay, so this was this is supposed to be in the," and then she just comes back and just starts fucking opera belting like crazy. I was just like, "Okay, respect, respect." Uh, dang, I guess we we still going because I noticed we had two minutes left. I was like, "What the fuck?" Anyways, let's uh, let's, let's get a little bit of that and listen to the sounds as it continues on. <laughs> Sounds like a siren of some kind. And you have those dun 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 dun, kind of almost Pirates of the Caribbean sounding uh, 
rhythm and motif and whatnot come from the keyboard there. I like that. Or it could actually be strings. Well, not sounds like it could be. Well, I think it's strings. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. And he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with the night. And Beautiful. Wow, this is, well, this is being kind of uh, spoken, sung out here. Um, you have a very gorgeous choir section going on, it's a whole or orchestra, strings and everything, just, just backing it up. This is very beautiful, very uh, high pitch, high tone sounds going on here. It's very gorgeous. Pay no worship to the garish sun. Now that line, da, 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 I feel like I've heard that from somewhere before. I don't know if that's like... It's just taken from some kind of. Uh, I don't know. I mean, potentially just a classic piece in general, but uh, is it? It, it specifically sounds like something that's that's written in some kind of either a requiem or and or uh, like funeral style piece, like the funeral march or something. Um, <clears throat> it just. I feel like I've heard it. The first place that makes my brain go is Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, trying to remember where it was. Da, 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 da. I can't remember if that. I want to say it's after uh, Quasimodo's mother dies on the steps, which again would fit the whole funeral death kind of thought there but i don't i don't remember i don't really remember anyways <laughs> very cool i feel like i heard this more i think it was taken from some kind of classical piece of whatnot that's been reused throughout different stuff and whatnot it's really cool also very very clean tone here good vibrato great opera style sound here That's a uh, that's a high note there, <laughs> and it sounds. I mean, do not get me wrong. Floor has an amazingly high, uh, high range for sure. She can sing really high. It sounds like she's pushing her limits there. Oh. Yeah, I think she's definitely going into a falsetto voice there and it sounds like she's really pushing herself for that now which i mean she still nails she still hits it she still nails it but it definitely has a sound like it's like it's tenuous it's gonna break because it definitely sounds like she's pushing the top end of her register there but like you know respect respect for hitting that note Again and all like that. I, I'm I'm just getting hunchback of Notre Dame vibes like crazy right here. It could just be the rhythm. I don't know. But I do love the uh, the, 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 the those male voices that I can hear in the choir backing her up and whatnot. It's really sick. Jesus, like not only is that a good sound, like not only is that just like a, a very, very high note, clean sound in there, but like you can see the not only the the amount of uh, shaking from the vibrato that she's doing, but also the moment where that mouth like stretches even wider than you feel like she should, should be humanly possible. 
Just like, that's, that's pretty sick. Right there. Oh. Good roll there. Good tongue roll there. I like that. Yeah, you can just see, by the way, uh, fate, it lifts a little bit more forward in the way that uh, <clears throat> the, the corners of your mouth kind of tuck back like that. I don't know much about vocals. I don't know much about mouth shape and, and singing and whatnot. All I know is whenever I sing an opera singer, that's the way they do it. Um, and I know that it's, it's, it's shaping the mouth in some way, shape, or form so that you can get that kind of open, operatic, resonating tone and whatnot and get to kind of project because your mouth is a bell. And the way you shape it is going to affect the type of sound that comes out and the capabilities of the tone whether it's going to be more round, it's going to be more sharp and easily, whether it's going to have that open, resonating quality for that kind of vibrato and tone to come out. And, uh, yeah, you can. I just, I just see this, and while I don't know wh what that's causing to happen, all I know is that as great form, and you can just see technique and training just in her mouth, which I think is, I think is respectable. I think that's really cool. You can, you, like, she closed her eyes at that point. She got focused. She knew she had to focus in on this part. And you can even, you can even see it in her face there. Hold on. Right there, that, like, she pushed and belted for that note. Like you can see in the way that everything scrunched up, teeth, like, just popped out. Just, like, she really pushed for that note. And she got it. Like that was pretty impressive. And you, I just love this this slight moment before she does it when you see her close her eyes and literally brace herself because she knows what she's about to do. I think it was pretty cool. So before, yeah, this was the last 10 seconds that I had written down. I love this dum, 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 dum. And while she's holding out that beautiful vibrato note there. Um, <clears> that reminds me, uh, back in college, whenever I was playing my euphonium, uh, when I was playing a recital or whatnot, whenever I had a piece that would hit that high B flat or C or any anywhere above that high B flat, like it's just like you just like you mentally know that note's coming up and you just kind of prepare yourself make sure you get the air and you just fucking go for it and uh just seeing that in another musician in a completely different instrument is uh is just like i've been there <laughs> I, I know what that feeling is that moment before it's like okay i gotta nail this focus boom and you just when, when it just comes out it's just like fuck yeah it's, it's a good feeling it, it really is a good feeling man the tone in that note she holds out there is very clean that vibrato is ridiculously tight like <clears throat> like you can see that she's just keeping that mouth just it doesn't it doesn't change it doesn't move she's keeping that tone perfectly she's focusing on keeping her mouth from moving and changing to fuck up that tone like it's just stock still and controlled little lip movement that you see that she's doing to her brother. <sighs> Stopped it right there. I remember that I was like, it ends fast. I got to get to pause this bad boy. Man, that is one hell of, uh, of a send-off for this person. Like, I mean, it was... Uh, 
<clears throat> I could do math. I mean, I don't know when the, when that would be different from when the album came out, but from this performance specifically, yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, that says twenty twenty, so within thirteen to fourteen years, no twenty, excuse me, <laughs> twenty three to twenty four years um, after his death, but still, there's one hell of a send off here. Like, if someone wrote a song like this, especially with that end on it. For your de- for your funeral, your death, or whatnot, my that sounds that'd be an honor. That would definitely be one hell of an honor right there. That's pretty sick. That's pretty cool. Anyways, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna do it for Shoemaker. I don't know why, but I expected this song to be more. I mean, I for, I didn't I didn't read the part where he was a geologist, so I uh, honestly thought that he was a cobbler. <laughs> Because I mean, you like you gotta right. If your last name is Shoemaker, you gotta be making shoes. I mean, <laughs> but uh, so I thought it was gonna be more like robust, like European, uh, European city building in the in like the seventeen eighteen hundreds or something. Just a small like you imagine like the the, the office that. Uh, Ebenezer Scrooge works in kind of like like that setting so I thought it was going to be more I thought it was going to go in a different direction this one went more like stellar and just like extraterrestrial up in here with a crazy uh, funeral send off opera belt at the end I didn't see that coming I thought this was going to be like completely different if I'm, if I'm being uh, extremely honest with you but I liked where it went I am not mad at that. What I mean, I could look on that website too. I don't know why I do not. What do we have next here for this album? I have very much been enjoying this album so far. I mean, it's not much from I wish that I don't like. I think there's only been two songs that I've heard that's been like meh. Sorry. Out of four albums. Well, four albums plus a handful from other albums. So, yeah. Not much. Not much. But uh, next we have Harvest. Which uh, I think the Wikipedia thing, I closed it down so I can't see it. I'm not going to type it up again. But uh, I think it mentioned something about uh, just kind of the, well, obviously, Harvest, you know, uh, <clears throat> food and, you know, stuff like that. But, um, I think it's saying something about kind of the just the life and death cycle of humanity, something like that. But I'm not a hundred percent positive if I'm remembering that correctly. But I'm excited. Uh, this is the only live one we're going to do. Which I mean, I think if we were going to do a live one, this is pretty sick. Uh, this is a pretty sick one uh, in general. That was, that was pretty cool. I like that. Also, like the environment. I think it would just be cool to play in that environment in general. Like, if it actually existed to, to perform in there, like, that should definitely be a concert hall modeled after this, for sure. That's pretty fucking cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to go back to the uh, to the videos that they created. Uh, the uh, lyrical videos with all the um, images and whatnot that, was, that we listened to back in music. And I'm pretty sure there's no other music videos, but I don't remember. So, yep. All right, we only have six more to go before we get to the nature side of it, and I will continue to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do with that. So, thank you all for joining me here today. Nightwish. All the creative, amazing musicians of Nightwish. Thank you for the music. I appreciate you. And I will see you all next time.